Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderb, and today I'm going to build another first to fight kit. This time, by patron choice, the Panzerkampfwagen 35T, and a fine choice it is. This is a plastic wargaming kit in 172nd scale, intended for first to fight's wargame system Ujaijin 1939. I know I'm terrible at speaking Polish, the back of the box shows us a basic painting and marking guide with colour suggestions from Vallejo. There's also a little bit of information about the tank in Polish, German and English. And of course there's the exploded diagram that serves as instructions. The diagram itself isn't too hard to understand, though the numbers are a bit on the small side, which obviously makes them a bit hard to read. Often the First to Fight website has instructions for these kits, which can be zoomed in to make them easier to read, but in this case I wasn't able to find any. However, you should be able to get by with what's on the box. I did, so it can't be that hard. Inside the box, we find three sprues moulded in grey plastic. The first one only contains the hull top, and this does look pretty good. The moulded on tools look nice and crisp, and they stand out quite well. They almost look as though they could have been parts that have been glued into place. There's quite a bit of depth here. The rivet detail is quite nice too. I'm not going to count them, but they do look pretty good, and they don't seem to be overscale as they do kind of tend to be sometimes on gaming models. The second sprue has two parts on it, the turret top and one of the machine guns. This is also nicely moulded, and the rivets are plentiful and good looking. The third sprue, surprisingly, has more than three parts. This is a trend I'm glad to see broken. There aren't really a lot of parts though, not that a low part count is a bad thing, of course. Everything in this kit looks quite good and neat. There are mould lines, because this is a plastic kit and mould lines are always present in plastic kits, but they are quite minor, and you are not going to be spending too much time removing them and tidying things up. I can't tell you how realistic the details on this model are, but everything looks pretty good to me. It's quite convincing as a Panzerkampfwagen 35T, and that's really what you want. Unless you don't want a Panzer 35T, I guess. And if that's the case, buy a different kit. There's that trademark herbert herbert -er good advice, TM. The decal sheet is very simple, which is fine. Simple markings is about all this tank needs. I'm pretty sure the Panzer 35T was used by a couple of different forces, so if you did want different markings, it probably wouldn't be too hard to find something suitable in this scale. And of course, the kit includes a magazine. This is issue number 38. Should have been number 35, just so that, you know, Panzer 35 and number 35 match up. Do they really need to do that? No, but I would have. The magazine is in Polish, so if you don't understand Polish, you can't read it. It's not allowed but you can still look at the pictures. Or if you want, you could try use some sort of translator. That might work as well. Either way, I think it's a cool inclusion, even if I can't read it. Now that we know what's in the box, it's time to glue some bits of plastic together. Heck yeah! Heck yeah. The instructions don't give any particular order in which to do things, so I decided to start with the hull, because why not? There's a few contact points for the tracks, and the glue god would be pleased if you applied glue to all of them. Then the tracks go on. This is pretty easy, though the tracks do feel like they could break if you applied a bit too much pressure, so be careful of that. These tracks are a single part, and I think they look rather good. Onto the outsides of the drive sprockets, I glue these outer rim things. I guess this kind of counts as parts for the tracks, so maybe they're technically not single part tracks? but whatever. These things are easy enough to glue on, and there's a pair for the front as well. These go on pretty much the same way, and by pretty much, I mean exactly. I'm not entirely sure what these are for, but I would assume they're meant to keep the tracks from coming off. I guess it's a design choice that never caught on, and it does look like they would get clogged up with mud and such. Maybe that's why it didn't catch on. Anyway, the next thing I did was glue the hull top into place. There's some guide pins in the middle of the hull, which is quite helpful. I did have to apply a little pressure, mostly at the front, in order to minimise the gaps, and it is still a little bit gappy at the rear, so I'm going to have to fill that in before painting, but I'm sure I can deal with that. The hull looks good, but there's still a couple of details to add. Like the exhaust here. This goes into place nice and easy on the tank's right hand side. A little pressure and maybe some extra glue for the glue god, and it's on good and proper. Then we add a machine gun to the front of the hull. 
This looks like a big chonker of a gun, but really I think it's just that the tank is kind of small. I found tweezers to be pretty helpful here. I follow that with this thing, which I think might be a radio antenna mount. Obviously I don't know for sure though. It's not too difficult to place, and again, tweezers make it a bit easier. Thank you tweezers, you're a real friend. Obviously be careful when you're tweezering a part like this. Rounded parts do like to go flying, and they're a favourite of the carpet monster, who is a right bastard. The final hull detail is this horn. Are you going to make another bad joke about the tank being horny, Herbert? You know, I would never do that. This part looks pretty fiddly to get into place, and it is. There isn't a guide hole for it or anything like that, so you've got to get it to stand up on the little mounting knob. It's fiddly, of course, but it is doable. Clearly I've done it, so you can too. Now it's turret time. It seemed a good idea to me to glue the gun into place first. There's no backing part to hold this in place and allow it to be movable, which is fine by me, so I just glue it into place. I could jigger it so the gap between the turret and the gun is more towards the bottom so it's a bit less obvious. I also make sure the elevation is where I want it. To the right of that, in what is probably the obvious location, I install a machine gun. You'll probably need to nudge this a little bit to get it nice and neat. I don't think this is a coaxial machine gun so I don't worry about lining it up with the main gun, at least in the vertical axis. The bottom of the turret goes on next, and this is very easy to do as you can tell by looking at it. The commander's hatch goes into place next. It has a tiny little nubbin for keying, so there is a particular way it should go on. Nothing too tricky here though, or anywhere in this kit really. Next we place the turret atop the hull, and as you can see, there's nothing to hold this in place, and it will fall off quite easily. Obviously you could fix that yourself, and I think the easiest way to do that would be by gluing some mounts from some scrap plastic into the tank and gluing magnets onto those. I clearly haven't done that, but I'm sure you could figure it out yourself. Anyway, the plastic Panzerkampfwagen 35T in 72nd scale by First to Fight is now completed and I quite like it. The only problem I have with it is that the turret doesn't lock onto the hull. The other turrets in the first to fight kits I've seen so far have had them, and I hope the rest of them do and this is an outlier. All that said, I do think it is a pretty minor problem, and like I said, it could be corrected with some magnets and some scrap sprue. Also, it clearly doesn't affect the appearance of the model. You just have to either do a little bit of extra work or be careful when handling it. This model is a good, fun and fairly simple kit to build. There's a couple of tiny fiddly bits, but not quite as fiddly as some of the other first to fight kits I've seen. It didn't take a lot of time to put together, and as usual, I built this live on stream. And that does mean it takes me a little bit longer to complete than somebody not being distracted by all the things that streaming your model building entails. Not surprising really, it is a wargaming kit and they are generally designed to be quick and easy to put together, and that means if you need a horde of Panzer 35 Ts, you could quite easily whip one up in an afternoon. Then your enemies will tremble before you, or they'll laugh at your puny riveted death trap. I guess it really depends on what you're up against, doesn't it? Anyway, I think this is a pretty good little kit. It was pleasant to build, and the result is good. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel. The link is in the description, which is where you can also find links to all of my other things, like social media. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thank you for watching. Farewell.